In a world where laughter echoed through cozy corners and camaraderie flowed as freely as the drinks behind the bar, there emerged a timeless tale that still dances through our memories like a well-worn tune. Picture this, it was your first encounter with the iconic 1982 TV series, Cheers. Do you remember that moment? The first time you stepped into that charming little Boston bar where everybody knows your name. It was like meeting old friends, wasn't it? As if the warmth of the Cheers crew seeped through the screen and invited you to join their witty banter and heartfelt confessions. Perhaps your heart lifted alongside Sam Malone's confident grin the ex-baseball player turned bartender who poured not just drinks but wisdom. Or maybe you found solace in Diane Chambers' intellectual quips, her sometimes bewildered charm contrasting beautifully with the bar's earthy embrace. And oh, the unforgettable Norm Peterson. His entrance was always a herald of joviality, his every norm, greeted by the chorus of voices calling his name. But let's not forget the perpetual barflies, Cliff and Carla, their exchanges sparking with fire and wit, their presence adding that quirky essence that makes Cheers a haven of diverse personalities. Every time you tuned in, you were stepping into a community where the extraordinary hid in the ordinary, where laughter and camaraderie painted a vivid canvas of life's ups and downs. Now, let's delve deeper into the intriguing world of Cheers with a few enchanting tidbits. Did you know that the show was initially met with skepticism, but swiftly charmed its way into hearts, ultimately becoming one of television's most cherished sitcoms? And there's more where that came from, random facts that will unravel the behind-the-scenes magic that made Cheers an enchanting masterpiece. So, here's to revisiting that iconic bar, to reminiscing the laughter, the wisdom, and the timeless connections forged within its walls. Join me in uncovering the captivating trivia that makes Cheers more than just a TV show. It's a piece of our shared nostalgia. Shared nostalgia. Shared nostalgia. Chicago's second city stars, Shelley Long and George Went, the comedic backbone of cheers in the bustling comedy circuit of Chicago. The seedlings of laughter often find their roots in the legendary improv haven known as Second City. Two of the iconic faces from the 1982 TV series Cheers, Shelley Long and George Went, emerged as prime examples of this comedic pedigree. Long and Went, before they found their eternal residence at the fictional Cheers bar in Boston, honed their humor on the stages of Second City. Long, with her impeccable timing and affable charm, and went, with his lovable demeanor and quips that could disarm even the most disgruntled patron, were destined to become cornerstones of the series. Beyond the barstools and the snappy one-liners, their formative years at Second City lent a layer of authenticity to their performances. Their Chicago and roots undeniably influenced their portrayal of the diverse ensemble cast, making Cheers not just a bar, but a genuine slice of Americana where the characters' lives intermingled. While Cheers' legacy is woven with threads of camaraderie, romance, and laughter, it's the comedic foundation provided by Long and Went, crafted in the Second City Crucible, that continues to resonate with audiences even decades later. These stars' journey from the improv stages of Chicago to the iconic barstools of Cheers remains a testament to the power of laughter that began in the Windy City. This article is based on information from IMDb a reputable source of entertainment knowledge. From bar set auditions to paramount success, the Cheers legacy in the early days of the beloved 1982 TV series Cheers, auditions for the pivotal roles of Sam Malone and Diane Chambers took place on the familiar set of the hotel bar featured in Bosom Buddies. The stage at Paramount Studios, where Cheers was brought to life, would later evolve into the breeding ground for its hit spin-off, Frasier. However, the show's casting journey didn't stop there. The introduction of Rebecca Howe, portrayed by Kirstie Alley, brought about a deliberate contrast. Seeking an actress who was an unknown presence with strikingly different physical traits from Shelley Long's Diane, the producers found Alley, who had unexpectedly ventured into the galaxy as the young Vulcan officer Lieutenant Savick in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. The convergence of these casting choices set the stage for Cheers to become an iconic part of television history. The synergy between contrasting characters and the evolution from auditions on one bar set to the establishment of another played a pivotal role in its success. 
As the curtain fell on Cheers, its spirit lived on in the spin-off Frasier, taking root on the very same stage at Paramount Studios where the unforgettable barroom camaraderie first blossomed. The legacy of Cheers and its intriguing casting anecdotes serve as a testament to the dynamic world of television production, where chance encounters and unexpected choices can shape the course of entertainment history. In a surprising turn of events for the iconic 1982 TV series Cheers, one episode remains a hidden gem, lost to the annals of television history. Titled Uncle Sam Malone, this unaired installment took an unexpected educational detour. The plot revolved around the gang's endeavor to educate Diane about the merits of U.S. savings bonds as a savvy investment choice. Crafted by the pen of Ralph Phillips and skillfully directed by James Burroughs, this special episode was tailor-made for the U.S. Treasury's savings bonds campaigns. While many fans remember the camaraderie and barroom banter that defined the show, this unreleased episode stands as a testament to the series' unique willingness to venture into uncharted storytelling territory. The very brink of cancellation loomed over cheers during its fledgling days on the airwaves. NBC executives, wary of the show's initial performance, contemplated pulling the plug. Yet, salvation arrived in the form of Brandon Tartikoff, then the valiant NBC Entertainment president. His foresight and dedication prevailed, eventually molding cheers into the beloved sitcom, that would go on to grace screens for 11 remarkable seasons. Tartikoff's support marked a turning point, solidifying his legacy as a champion of enduring television. As the decades have marched on, Cheers has etched itself into the pantheon of television history. Its legacy is peppered with anecdotes like these, tantalizing glimpses into the show's evolution and its behind-the-scenes triumph. From the moment Carla Maria Victoria Angelina Teresa Polonia Lazapon Tortelli Lebeck's name graced the screen to the unsung tale of Uncle Sam Malo. Each thread weaves a rich tapestry that has earned Cheers its place in the hearts of audiences worldwide. Cheers, unveiling the unlikely triumph of a barroom sitcom in the annals of television history, there emerges the singular tale of Cheers, a barroom sitcom that defied expectations. As the show hit the airwaves in 1982, few could have predicted its trajectory, marked by moments both quirky and poignant. While various facets have shaped its legacy, one pivotal aspect revolves around the enigmatic figure of Norm Peterson, brought to life by George Went. Norm's real first name, Hillary, and his daughter's matching moniker in the real world may appear as mere coincidences. However, this tidbit underscores the intricate layers of connection between the character and the actor, adding a personal touch that resonates with audiences even today. Such synchronicities echo the resonance Cheers achieved, elevating the sitcom beyond its barroom backdrop. Yet, an unexpected twist in the show's journey came in the form of Ted Danson's decision. As the show's charismatic centerpiece, Danson's Ted Sam Malone was integral to its allure. His choice to depart after the 11th season would become the catalyst for the show's eventual cancellation. The ensemble camaraderie, the banter-filled bar, and the familiar faces that frequented the series all faced an uncertain future. Reflecting on Cheers, one cannot ignore its audacious debut, landing it in the Nielsen ratings dead last. It's a stark testament to the show's slow-burning rise, fueled by word of mouth and steadfast viewers who embraced the quirks of its characters. This surprising entry point only underscores the show's remarkable journey from underdog to enduring classic. In a landscape often dominated by high-octane dramas and fast-paced narratives, Cheers dared to linger in the intimate spaces, where patrons became family, and every quip was savored like a fine drink. The show's charm lay in its ability to remind us that even in a bustling city like Boston, a bar can be a haven, a place where everybody knows your name. As we reflect on the legacy of Cheers, the convergence of character, actor, and viewer loyalty stands as a testament to the show's ability to bridge the gap between screen and reality. Though its 11th season marked its bittersweet end, the spirit of Cheers continues to be celebrated, reminding us that amidst life's uncertainties, a barstool and a warm welcome await. Where everybody knows your name, Cheers timeless anthem in the realm of TV nostalgia. Few themes resonate as deeply as the iconic melody of Where Everybody Knows Your Name. Originally penned by songwriter Gary Portnoy, the tune gained a life of its own when it was released as a single in 1983. While some rumors attributed its crooning to Woody Harrelson, 
the man who would later become Woody Boyd in the beloved series Cheers. The truth is distinct. Harrelson's connection with the song only surfaced post-casting. Jackie Swanson, the actress behind Woody's affectionate on-screen partner, Kelly, reveals a backstage secret. In the early years of the show, her heart belonged to none other than Woody Harrelson. Everyone did. She quipped, echoing the collective sentiment of the cast and crew. But it wasn't just off-screen romances that shaped the show's dynamics. The departure of Shelley Long, the original Diane Chambers, marked a pivotal shift for the writers. They candidly admitted that post-Long era, the creative reins loosened. The writers found freedom in crafting an ensemble-based narrative, unshackled from the pressure to tether Sam and Diane at the show's core. Amidst barstool confessions and quirky camaraderie, the theme song's notes continue to echo through time, ranked as the Paramount TV theme song in a 2011 Rolling Stone poll. Cheers stands as a testament to the intermingling of melody and character, where everybody indeed knows your name, 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 name. Name. As we bid adieu, my fellow connoisseurs of classic television, let us linger for a moment in the warm embrace of nostalgia, where the barstools are as familiar as old friends and the laughter still echoes through the chambers of our hearts. The yearning to return to the cozy confines of Cheers, that timeless gem of the 80 seconds, tugs at our senses like a favorite song we can't help but hum. As the camera panned across the bar, revealing each character's quirks and dreams, we found a reflection of ourselves in their tales of camaraderie and camaraderie. Perhaps you were lured into the series by the magnetic pull of Sam's charm, or maybe the indomitable Carla tickled your funny bow. Whether you identified with Diane's poetic aspirations or Norm's steadfast presence, at the bar, Cheers became a portal to our own journeys, a place where we found solace, laughter, and a sense of belonging. Now, my fellow travelers through time, I invite you to share your treasured moments, those snippets of time spent with Sam, Diane, Norm, Cliff, and the whole unforgettable gang. How did their stories intertwine with your own? What nuggets of wisdom did coach gentle guidance impart upon your path? And when you think of that iconic theme song, do you not feel a pang of emotion, a reminder of simpler days when the laughter of a sitcom could mend even the most tattered of spirits? In the grand tapestry of our lives, Cheers remains a patch woven with threads of joy and friendship. So, I implore you to raise your virtual glass to this show that transcended the confines of a screen and became a cherished companion. Let us continue to celebrate its legacy by sharing our stories, our smiles, and our insights. Thank you, dear reader, for indulging in this voyage down memory lane, for savoring the bittersweet nostalgia that accompanies the mention of cheers. Your time and your memories are precious gems that enrich our collective experience. Here's to you, here's to cheers, and here's to the stories that connect us all. Warm regards and a heartfelt toast to the 1982 TV series Cheers.